In last week's video I showed how I made this example of a road and that prompted one or two comments that were really helpful to me. In today's video we look at how I complete the station four call, take on some feedback and hopefully produce a more pleasing result. Hello everyone, welcome back. So what you have here is the essentially complete station forecourt area for my Bexhill West project. The main terminus road is in, the station car park is in, and there's lots and lots of this sort of brick set or cobble detail that I spoke of last time. However, after my last video, there was a couple of comments where um, the quality, shall we say, of my uh, sets in the gutter were, was criticised and um, one viewer very very helpfully suggested that I might make a 3D printed tool to improve the effect. So this week that's what I've done and this video will run through how I've used the tool. It's a bit of a repeat in a way of what we did in last week's episode but this time uh, I think the results are a little bit more impressive. So without further ado let's get straight into it. Now I think my main mistake in last week's video was showing a close-up, it sort of exploded up really big and to fill the screen. Um, no doubt it, the cobble effect that I'd achieved, you know, when you're looking back at it, it does look a bit, a bit ridiculous, but, but one has to remember that's magnified up huge. The actual effects viewed from sort of viewing distance in 4mm scale, these, these little cobbles are tiny. However, I'm grateful to Malcolm Easter who said they should be more rectangular and it was he who suggested that I make a, a 3D printed tool. Now it just so happens that the day after I uploaded that video, I found this picture on the internet. This shows Western Road in Bexhill and you can clearly see the, the sets into the gutter and sort of miraculously there's even a, even a South Eastern and Chatham Railway horse-drawn cart in the picture too which sort of completes the scene and confirms that what I'm doing is, isn't wrong for that sort of older period in time. Anyway I took on board Malcolm's thoughts and my first thought therefore was to make some sort of little roller device that I could roll along. So here's a picture of it. This is the basic set roller, I don't know what you call it. Um, now on the model I'd included some um, sort of cast iron drain covers in the gutters and I thought well, I won't be able to roll that roller up to the gutters. So I made a Mark II version of the roller which looks like this which has a, a sort of 90 degree cutout in it and that allows me to drop the straight side of the cutout in alongside the, the cast iron drain and then start the roller off and then I'm able to pick that pattern up with the previous roller I just showed you. So that's it, let's see it all in, in action.
Now it's my understanding that when these roads were tarmacked or the asphalt was laid, the timber boards about 12 inches wide were laid into the gutters over the sets and that the asphalt material was kind of poured up to those and then a mechanical roller would be used to roll up to and maybe even over the top of the board and this would leave a really neat square margin to the road, sort of 12 inches wide. Now I've got some 4mm masking tape and this would have been ideal to mask the, the sets off. However, I didn't. I chose not to make the edges too perfect because I'm aware that with everything here sort of being laser cut and very, very precise, there's a lack of kind of texture and what have you to it. So what I did was I laid the strip of masking tape out and just freehand cut some strips. And I've deliberately made these with slightly wavy edges in the hope that when this thing is all finished, it might give the impression of a, a road that's maybe been resurfaced a couple of times and where maybe a bit less care has been taken. And overall, I'm quite pleased with how it's worked out, actually. It's just added that little bit of variety um, that makes the whole thing look a little bit more natural, I guess. Anyway, this is the process of masking out all of those, um, those granite sets. And then it's simply a case of once this fill has been applied, peeling off the masking tape to reveal the final outcome. And so this is the final outcome with the filler applied. Now this is just a straightforward sort of fine surface decorators filler. And I've built this up in several layers um, just, to, just to complete the contours of the whole job. So that's to put the camper on the road and also to, um, to fill the car park area. Now what's not obvious perhaps on the camera is that there's a, quite a subtle rise from um, the, the roadside up to the station and it's about seven or eight millimetres and as I say on the camera it doesn't look much but when you look at the model it's all very subtle and very slight and I was very keen to try and preserve that. So having slapped this filler down I then set to it with sandpaper around a block and just worked those, um, those contours in such that I thought they were sort of pleasing and nice. Now I've still got a bit of work to do um, but once I got it sort of 95% there I thought well I'll blow some paint over that will help me see the the contours more fully and and identify any blemishes that need filling. I'm keen to keep some of the little marks you'll see them in a minute um, just because they look like maybe tarmac which has broken away at the edges and, and things like that. So my next task was to just quickly throw some paint over the whole thing. So here's a few pictures which show the finished effect. Now I'm still going to go over and give this another little skim of filler just to improve the last of the few blemishes before giving it the final coat of paint. But you get the idea. Now these photos show the details sort of quite cruelly magnified. But I think you'd agree with me, or I hope you'd agree with me, the effect is already looking quite good and I'm quite pleased. Now these little figures were painted for me by my friend Michael. And when he painted them, he mounted them on top of some washers and fixed them to some champagne corks, I believe, whilst he painted them. I'm still to remove those washers. That's another job I need to get round to soon. Here you can see the sets that I laid where the road met the station car park. I'm not sure if there was a line of sets there or not, but I thought I'd add it. It's a little bit of extra detail. There's even a manhole cover. It's got my name engraved on it. Um, and there you go. This is sort of overall look of the station approach. I'm really pleased with it so far and sadly I've run out of time this weekend to take this project any further but hopefully next weekend I shall be able to finish that surface and get a final coat of paint onto the station car park and terminus road. Well that's been the progress for this week and I'm quite pleased with how this is all coming together. Whilst the filler has been drying and what have you I have completed all of the canopy, the glazed canopy frames for the station concourse. So that's all done, as are all of these frames now for the main station platform. And hopefully next week I'll be able to put the whole thing together and you'll be able to see how it looks. And it's quite impressive, I'm really pleased with it. Now I'm going to put back up on screen this picture I showed you earlier, because it was whilst looking at it, I found this delightfully named shop called Bexhill Umbrella Works. And it got me thinking sort of, nostalgically back to the time when ladies and gentlemen took so much care and pride in the purchase and maintenance of their umbrellas that even a small town like Bexhill warranted having its own umbrella works. Oh how times change. 
Now there's been another sort of milestone achieved this week and that's the channel has passed the sort of 1,000 subscriber sort of threshold or whatever you call it. So we're, we're over there now and I'm delighted and thank you to everyone who's subscribed and supported the channel. Your comments and everything sort of motivate me to keep doing my best and push this job forward. And as you've seen in this week's video, some of those comments are really invaluable and had I not have had the feedback that I had around these sets in particular, I wouldn't have made the progress I've made this weekend. So to everyone who's getting involved, thank you ever so much indeed. Now I did have planned a sort of a 100, or sorry, 1,000 subscriber special video, but I was thinking that that would be a little way off yet, and so that's still in the works, but in a few weeks' time we'll have that, and um, and hopefully we can all celebrate together this 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 milestone. Now last week I mentioned about this whole model needing to represent 1902 when the station opened but also 1958, specifically October 1958. And I didn't go on in the video to explain why. Now I've covered it in the past but of course viewers who are new to the channel have no idea and I didn't sort of elaborate on that in the video so my apologies if I caused any confusion. I'm going to do a video just about that episode of October 1958. I've been doing lots of research and I've got enough detail now to, I think, satisfy even the nerdiest river counter. So in a couple of weeks time we'll have a video looking specifically at October 1958 and why it was special in the history of Bexhill West. Okay, till next week. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you soon. Cheerio.